Hi everyone, Daniel from Homegrown Melbourne, Australia. So, I'm doing something a little bit different today from what I normally do out in the garden or with the chooks of the bees. Um, I have done some uh, fermentation videos around beer and mead, but what we're doing today is we're starting to build a controller, which we can use for both controlling a fermentation fridge to make sure we've got the temperature set right, or also to control um, brewing processes. So we've installed this product called Craft Beer Pie. It's a bit of um, um, sort of freeware software, I suppose, that you can download off the internet and um, runs on a, a Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi is a relatively cheap in Australia. You might pay about 70 bucks for a sort of middle of the road one. And um, this is a, a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, in a little case there with the connector cable coming off the GPIO pins and connecting up to a little bit of a prototyping board that I've started to play with. So the idea here is that um, we're prototyping turning on a heat element that would sit in our uh, hot liquor tank and we can see here that the target temperature I've set for the hot liquor tank is just an arbitrary 60 degrees and the temperature sensor a DS18 B20 is um, on this cable connected all the way up to this connect this blue connector running back to the breadboard and at the moment um, that's dropping temperature because I've got it out of the hot water and it's down to 29 but the idea is if um, this was sitting in the hot liquor tank um, it would be reading the temperature of the liquid or the water or the wort depending on what it's in and basically um, reading the temperature it would enable you to automatically turn off the heating element so you can see here um, as it's approached 60 degrees it's turned off the heating element and you can see the red LED representing the heating elements also turned off. So if I take it back out again, so it got up to 62 degrees, this might take a little while. But um, one would think then as it starts to drop, it turns the heating element back on and there you can see the red LED turn back on. So we've got our electronics, uh, very simple electronics working, talking back to the Raspberry Pi, um, which is basically uh, producing a web page that I'm looking at on my iPad here uh, via Wi-Fi. And so walking around the house, I would be able to control um, my brew, my brew day um, for some all grain brewing. And basically, um, I can either manually turn that off and look at there it goes, it turns it back on again because we're below target temperature or I can just turn that off altogether. So um, that's really the first of my uh, prototyping experiments. So basically how's this working? We've got three wires on the temperature sensor. So one's power, one's ground, um, or neutral and um, the other one's a data cable and um, I think I've got another spare one here we can have a closer look at in terms of the three wires so you can see there we've got our three wires and the yellow one's the data cable and, and basically what we've done We've just used the default GPIO pin, which is GPIO 4, and you can see that there. And we've cabled that from the Raspberry Pi all the way through, um, if you follow this green cable, to the yellow cable on the sensor. So really it's simple as that. Um, 
we've selected in the Raspberry Pi system, you've got the ability here under system to basically, under your hardware settings, specify um, heater, for example. So here's our heater. And if we go into the heater, you can see I've specified GPIO 21 for the heater. And so if we go back over to the board, we can see GPIO 21 is powered to the uh, positive terminal of the LED. And we've just got a resistor across that LED circuit, just a small one. Um, and then in terms of the temperature sensor, we're also using a 4.7K resistor um, between the data and power, um, which is just part of a standard circuit that you'll find online uh, for using these devices, um, these temperature sensors. So I've got a few other little things in the pipeline uh, that we want to be able to test. So probably looking ultimately at building a board that's powered at 12 volts. So we've got a little uh, five, uh, 12 to 5 volt step down uh, buck circuit. Again, these can be purchased online. It's very tiny and that will enable us um, to trigger um, relays um, at a higher voltage. So, and the way we'll trigger um, out of the GPIO pins at the lower voltage uh, up to a 12 volt is we we'll use a Darlington uh, transistor circuit. And so this is uh, a Darlington chip and I think it has about seven or eight um, pass-throughs that basically have little transistors in the circuits to basically allow us to trigger a circuit um, with a low voltage like um, coming out of the Raspberry Pi and connect up um, a VCC voltage of say 12 volts to it and then that 12 volts gets passed through to the relay to ensure the relay gets triggered. Some relays aren't very good at triggering at the lower voltages. So um, we'll be playing with that as well. Um, I've got some uh, solid state relays on their way for uh, that are 40 amp relays that will safely trigger um, the heating of the water. Um, they might be like 3000 watts or 2400 watts. And we, we need um, solid state relays for those. These little relays won't do it, but these relays are probably good for triggering things like um, pumps um, to pump water around or, or valves that we might open and close automatically. So all future ideas that I've got um, as part of building up a final solution. So anyway, um, they can be opportunities for future videos. Um, I hope you found this a little bit interesting, um, something a little bit different. Um, for part one. Cheers, bye.